Hello, everybody. You can hear me, right? Yeah. Good afternoon. So today I will be giving a presentation about the peer-to-peer -peer learning, which we, uh, or Futoshi regularly calls the improved seed plus component of the intervention. Okay, just uh, a little bit, I would give an overview of what we're doing in the project, and then later on we can, I would explain further. Um, in general, what we want to do is look at how extension projects or extension programs are able to impact positively on the lives of smallholder farmers. And in doing this, we are concentrating on smallholder vegetable farmers and our location, um, the study location is in Kano and Kaduna states across four local governments and 80 communities in Kano and 70 communities in Kaduna. There are three interventions in our study. We look at the agricultural extension program itself. We look at something what we call branding, which I would um, further explain during the motivation. It's generally about branding farmers and not really the product. So the labeling and the certification is being shifted and the target is not on the product but on the farmer and we have a gender sensitization um, training or more like um, it's a behavioral e experimental aspect that we introduced into this project when we talk about partnerships we're really working with east west seed kt which is the foundation of east west seed but the innovation developers are east west seed so the, the company and the foundation are different. The, the foundation is in charge of providing training and capacity building, while the company itself produces the, the seeds. So like the, div the Diva F1 and the Padma F1 that farmers use, for instance, for, for tomatoes. <coughs> so I mentioned before that we just generally want to look into how um, extension programs are able to impact on the lives of smallholder farmers. But we're looking at this in three ways. Just before I explain the, the first way, um, we know that agriculture is important, otherwise we would not be here. But we also know that it's plagued with variety of, of challenges. And one of those challenges is that there are innovations that need scaling, but they don't get to the farmers. Farmers don't know about them. So we have new agricultural technologies that farmers are not using, like we've said, the plastic crates, the improved seeds. So how do we get them to adapt? Cultural extension models are one of the effective mechanisms that we say communicate technologies to farmers, right? And it has had so many critics um, over the, the years. Otherwise, why, why, why are all farmers not yet using all these improved technologies? And one of these critics is that maybe they're expensive, they're inaccessible and all that. We have an extension program right now that the one that we are studying, the one provided by East West KT, and this is an NGO, so it's free for farmers. It's well curated, or at least that's the, the, the idea, or that's what it's been sold out, that it's well curated to serve the needs of smallholder farmers and increase adoption level. So what we do first in our study is that we look into the adoption of, this, um, of these technologies based on the training provided by East West East KT. So do we see that these seeds, these gap these good agricultural practices are being adopted easily do we see the impact happening on the food security do we see nutrition improving do we see dietary diversity so in general that's what we we look at with this component and the point is we draw from the theory of innovation and dilution of innovation by rogers which says that when you're offering like when there are the, the, there's the didactic learning there's the social learning because they are key farmers, they are fair farmers, they're all learning together, that this is able to increase the adoption levels of farmers, right? And also the experimental learning as their demonstration plot. So it's not just that they're in a classroom, they learn by actually doing. So they are performing this thing, it's performative. However, again, there, is, uh, there are critics of agriculture extension models in the sense that they might not sustain adoption levels. So for instance, 
training 20 farmers in a community might not be sufficient enough to get to the, the 1,000 farmers. So how do we ensure that the 1,000 farmers are going to adopt these technologies and not just the farmers that we're training? And then we introduce another intervention, which is looking at the information dissemination and the diffusion of technology. In this case, we are trying to promote intentionally that these farmers or um, other farmers, so not the farmers that are being trained, are going to get the signal or they're going to get the training to help them also improve and have an uptake of these technologies. And by doing this, we use the components, the, the, the intervention that we call branding. The whole point of branding is that farmers get trained, so there are key and peer farmers, core farmers that get trained. And if these farmers, after the end of the, the training, the, the farmers just usually go home. That's the, the idea or the, the former extension model that East West Seed uses. But for branding, we promote these farmers to the community. So we try to um, e exploit the social network, the social den um, network density in the, in the study area. We announce them and we're coming from a demand-led perspective now instead of using a supply led. So we don't want to push it to farmers or push these peer farmers, incentivize them and tell them to go meet all these farmers and get them to adopt this level. We're trying to come from a within change from the farmer himself wanting to get this information. And then we point them to the right sources. So with branding, farmers get um, um, graduated in public and they get, um, they, and they're announced and they are, it's skill specific. So there's an exam, they pass the exam, which is a practical exam, and you're rewarded by the specialty, which you, um, you're branded with the specialty, which you're very good at during the exam. For example, seedling production or biopesticides training or seed selection or spraying or insect, um, the, the pest management practice, things like that. Are we still together? Yeah, okay, great. And so by drawing the change from within, we're able to know that these farmers themselves, like we said, farm, they, they would want to learn about this. They have the right sources. The idea is if we build the intention, if we point them to the right direction, that they are going to be able to get what they need and they would adopt these technologies. And then we go back again to seeing the adoption level. So if you see here, um, the branding does not happen without the, the training. I would explain more about that in the design. In addition to this, we also look into what's happening within the household as a subgroup or as a sub-discussion. And we try to generally improve the efficiency of the household working together. In the North, where our project is located, there are we say that there is surplus of um, labor and that so many the households, we say that there's a surplus of labor and the household have enough that's um, labor supply to work on the farm. But part of this labor are also women, right? And mainly with the laws there, women are not really allowed to do some of the farm work and all that. But then economic, when we did the piloting, we found that economic um, participation are also very important for them. We don't target women empowerment, although it might be a byproduct in our research, but what we target here is trying to get the household to work together. So we introduce something we call gender sensitization, which really cultivates intra-household intra collaboration. We don't do this through the conventional way of training farmers um, by sitting them down. We actually put this in entertainment. So we created two different drama um, with, in partnership with the Kano, Kalo Wood, the, the movie production of Kano, <laughs> Kaliwood, yeah. And we had two dramas which were shown to them for each season, they had a drama to watch. It's kind of like the telenovela concept. And we put in the messages of working together um, as, as a household in each of them. And that was how we, we that's what we did here. And we tried to do this um, by acting on their psychology to see what would happen if it would improve the general working together in the household. So in our design, we have a tree arm and not uh, a two arm. So we have two treatment groups and one control group. The first treatment group I, I explained is just uh, looking at what's happening with the um, extension module without having to, on, on adoption levels, without having to add the branding. And then with the branding, we 
see, we look at the, if there's an in, increased benefit of having the, the intentional branding stuff on the adoption levels of the household, and then we have a peer control. In the subgroup, we cross from the randomized people in the treatment only, and then we try to see the, the communities with spouse training and the communities without spouse training. Do we see an improvement in the empowerment of the household as a whole? And we do this looking at different models which we put in our survey and hope to get good results in the end. So where we are now, we're currently prepar preparing for our end line survey, which will start um, from the 1st of October down to the end of November. And we hope to finish our project reporting at the end of Q1. And we will see how that goes. I would not talk a, um, talk a lot about the baseline analysis because they are just really descriptives. But what really stood out for us that we did see that there could be spillovers um, because some communities reported um, receiving training already from East West EKT, which we plan to investigate further to see if that was just experimental effect in, in answering the, the question or if really there are potentials for spillover there. And we will take that into consideration when we're doing our analysis. We found that there were low uptake of training in general. So the very few that we see are the ones that are like outliers that showed up. And it, overall, our treatment groups are being are balanced. Um, yeah, I see that the ch challenges were not really changed, but I am, in terms of challenges, something that we uh, found during at piloting, something that came out for us was that we were talking now about the market trader link, and we found that most of our farmers actually sell directly to the, the traders and the off takers, even during field reports themselves. So farmers do know how to contact off takers, or off takers actually know where farmers are. And we were thinking more about aligning of alignment of interventions. For instance, in our communities where the East West Seed KT are already working, we don't have or we are not intentionally looking into the plastic crate intervention, for example. We we saw the use of the plastic crate intervention, but it's a whole different discussion because they use it only as a measurement tool sometimes for the raffia basket and then the wrap it, and the raffia basket is actually what still goes down to the east. So there is still a bit of differentiation there to see how effective it is in terms of going down to the east and coming back. So maybe interventions um, aligning better would increase more functionality of the of the uh, what the impact on the livelihoods of smallholder farmers. The other issue we found one potential one about defore deforestation um, in our communities. One of the gaps actually involves staking um, and staking it needs trees to do this. So we found farmers cutting down a lot of trees to be able to do that, but not planting the trees. And the whole idea of these are regenerative trees and not intentionally planting it means that on a long run, we might not have um, you know, enough trees for staking. And it's something East West Seed KT are trying to, they have to factor in how to educate farmers this, so I guess they're trying to deal with this challenge. Now, next step, we are going to assess our impact. We're going to look at the end line results and we're going to report them. Thank you.